Good evening and thank you for joining us for Kremti News 10 at 10 where we give you more news in less time. Let's get started. Roads covered in snow are quickly turning to roads slick with ice tonight. We are tracking conditions and what you can expect to see when you wake up tomorrow morning. So joining us for team coverage tonight, Kremti News Kyle Simchuk live in the storm tracker to show us the latest road conditions. First, though, we start with Chief Meteorologist Jeremy the Goo joining us in the studio with a look at our forecast. Jeremy? Well, Mark, when it comes to the overall forecast, it's all about the temperatures. We sit at 27 degrees right now, so not all that bad. A little bit of light snow coming down out in airway heights, but look at the dew point. 19 degrees. We are drying out, and that means our temperatures are set to drop. We just expired those winter weather advisories up in over 4th of July and look out past. Doesn't mean things get any better. We've got some of that light snow coming down. Notice it is still there around Spokane up in Deer Park. Newport, you're watching it finally wind down. Coeur d'Alene, Hayden still in some of that snow. Expect that to wind down here shortly. But as it winds down and moves out, skies clear. We're talking ample sunshine tomorrow. That means a very cold morning. Temperatures fall into the teens widespread overnight. Newport, how about that one for you? 14. Deer Park, likely around 18 degrees. Republic, 14. Wilbur, Spokane, 17. Coeur d'Alene, 18. Down in the Plus, you stay slightly warmer because you hang on to a few more clouds in the morning. But for us, it's all about the sunshine. Sunshine and temps in the mid-30s. We climb above freezing, but ah, it's just kind of barely. We do it again on Saturday, and by Sunday, we're talking our next round of snow and rain moving into much of the region. All right, sounds good, Jeremy. We'll check back in with you later in the broadcast. Spokane police responded to more than 80 crashes as of this afternoon, and with ice now taking the place of snow, that number will likely go up. Gremtu's Kyle Simchuk joining us now with a live update on road conditions. Kyle? Well, yeah, Mark, those few inches of snow we saw overnight and into the morning are still causing some issues tonight. Now, I will say I-90 is in great shape. Washdot's gonna, done a great job of keeping uh, I-90 clear. However, uh, some of the arterials we're seeing here in Spokane, I'll give you a look, we're on uh, kind of near 8th and Thierman. Uh, still quite a bit of snow and ice. Pat, why don't you tap on the brakes, see if we slide around a little bit. Yep, yep. You can see we're kind of skidding there uh, a little bit. Uh, I want to give you a look at some video now that we're approaching 8th and Thierman. Uh, earlier today, there was a crash involving at least two cars. Uh, they crashed into each other, um, a power pole and a metal fence. Again, this was just at the corner of 8th and Thierman, which we just passed through, uh, just past Spokane Valley City Line. No word on any injuries. However, police and fire crews were on scene for a few hours there tonight. Uh, we do know of injuries stemming from a crash which shut down Highway 195 for several hours today. Fire District 3 says a semi truck hit a car head on. The driver of the sedan had to be extricated from the car and was taken to the hospital with serious injuries. The semi driver was not injured. And two other semi trucks wrecked in Othello and blocked State Route 17 earlier. This is a photo from the Washington State Patrol. Troopers responded to this rollover crash and a separate semi versus car injury crash tonight. A lot of streets and highways in bad condition across the inland northwest. Back here taking a live look in the storm tracker. We checked with the city of Spokane earlier. So far this season, road crews have put down 800 tons of sand and de-icer as well as 200,000 gallons of liquid de-icer. It could be another tricky commute tomorrow. Be sure to check in with Up With Krem beginning at 5 a.m. for the latest road conditions. Reporting live in the Storm Tracker, Kyle Simcha, Krem 2 News. All right, Kyle, thank you very much. And we have been tracking the snowfall and its impacts all day. Head to Krem, or head to Krem 2 Plus, rather, for a look back at all of our coverage. It is free to download right now on Amazon Fire, Roku, and Apple TV. New tonight, the Washington State Patrol asking for help finding the driver of this truck. Troopers say that white pickup hit two people crossing the road in a crosswalk. It happened back on February 1st at around 5.45 p.m. Troopers say the driver turned northbound on State Route 395 from East Farwell Road, hit two people, then just drove away. Anyone with information is urged to call that number right there at the bottom of your screen. And now to our night beat with a quick look at today's top stories. A tense few hours in Great Falls, Montana today after Malmstrom Air Force Base went into lockdown for reports of an active shooter. According to the Air Force, a suspicious person was reported on base as an active shooter, but it turned out to be a false alarm. This forced all the airmen on base and the surrounding community, along with local schools, to go into lockdown. There are no confirmed shots fired or injuries reported at this hour. 
In our other top stories tonight, Stevens County is searching for a fisherman who went missing on Lake Roosevelt. According to the Sheriff's Department, the 51-year-old man went missing from his boat back on the 9th. He took off from the Bradbury boat launch wearing black and gray clothing. The next day, his empty boat was found at around 3 o'clock in the morning. If you have any information, you're asked to contact that number right there at the bottom of your screen. And today, the town of Malden celebrated the ribbon cutting for its newly built municipal building more than two years after the Bab Road fire destroyed 85% of the town. The new municipal building houses Malden's fire station, town hall, and post office. The town's mayor told Krem2 that he has been tra tracking the days to get here and just couldn't be happier. This is a true Eastern Washington disaster event and a successful one because we're on our first steps of the long road of recovery. There is still more to be rebuilt, but the town is celebrating this big success right now. And that was your night beat. To learn more about any of these stories, just head to our website. That's creme.com. Well, it is Boomtown Week here on Krem2, where we focus on the growth across the inland northwest, including changing roadways and traffic patterns. There is a spot where US 95 and Highway, meet, Highway 8 rather, meet in Moscow that sees more car crashes than average, and drivers in the area say traffic backs up for several blocks every day. That's a mess, <laughs> and it's incredibly confusing. The Idaho Transportation Department is starting the process of fixing the intersection, but it's going to take decades, they say. On Up with Krem tomorrow morning, our Nicole Hernandez talked to the mayor of Moscow and a local business owner with different ideas of how ITD should solve the problems. And that was your Krem 2 News 10 at 10, where you get more news in less time.